Welcome back, everyone, to the My Funny Friends podcast. So good to be back. Feels good to be back. Look at look at you looking all fresh faced. I shaved. I try you. and switch it up. I try okay. and switch it up. You know, I want to make sure no one can ever guess my age <laughs> until it's very obvious what my age is. Until they go uh, out drinking. I, until they go out drinking, and they're like, "Oh yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna be dead by 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> but uh, I'm Will Abels. I'm one of your hosts, uh, and with me, oh man, this guy is just he's leaving me in the dust. He doesn't call <laughs> me anymore. He doesn't text me anymore. He uh, he won't even answer here. my emails. He gave me a fake email. I couldn't get a hold of him. I had to send a postcard to his wife just to get a hold of him. The very lovely, the very talented Drew Harrison. Well, she's my she's my representative. You know, you got to get through her to get to me. You know, so yeah, yeah. She said it. She just said return to sender. Send the uh, postcard yeah, back. Smart, so. smart. <laughs> good. She's doing a great job. Then that's fantastic. Oh man. Well, it's good to see you, man. It's good to record another episode uh, with the Project Nerd Podcast Network. I'm excited for our guest this episode. When I was trying to wade through, you know all the weird videos that is TikTok. Mm -hmm. This guy was a, a ray of sunshine. He spoke to me on multiple levels. Uh, he reeled me in with the, the, some little Debbie stuff. And then he hit me with some college football. And then he started You're talking done. about my beloved South. So, you know, three Double strikes way, and you're in on this one. <laughs> the trifecta. Yeah. So give it up for our guest, uh, Matt Mitchell, Matt, how you doing, buddy? Gentlemen, gentlemen, thank you for having me on. I'm very oh, excited. Dude. What a, what an intro there! Yeah, you hit yes. all the hit all the hot points of the channel. That's the only good stuff that I do. Is that. <laughs> I love the SEC roundup, man. That is thank oh, you, man. God. Who's so? I, I have to ask: Is it who's your team? Who's oh which... gosh? I've you know I try to keep it under wraps. The uh, I did a live on TikTok last week, and they kind of pulled it out of me. Actually, they didn't pull it out of me. People started doing their research, and they they did a deep dive, which Ooh. scared me. Now it's like I didn't really probably need to go delete a bunch of old stuff. Now <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're yeah. better at that than I thought they'd be. Um, <laughs> but honestly, it's uh, a lot of people think I'm an Alabama fan because you know legally, I think you're required to be if you live this close to Tuscaloosa. But uh, I'm actually I grew up a Florida fan fan of the gators just I, I grew up in a, in a house divided alabama auburn so i didn't really get pulled you know too hard to one side yeah. and then i just saw that orange and blue and steve spurrier and and danny old warfel and the, the, the old fun and gun which was just yeah. fun to i mean that was just great fun. it still is fun right. to watch and yeah. you know that was like that's that was that was the no huddle back in the day that was that was the no huddle of the 90s was the fun and gun yeah. um, mm -hmm. and uh it made so college I got, I got football different you know, I, I enjoy yeah it. yeah I, that being said i still i still try to be impartial and i think over the years i've become more of just a fan of the game yeah because mm -hmm. it's yeah, i realized that i was way too emotionally invested in those games because it you lose on saturday and my weekend would be ruined like the <laughs> oh, rest of sure. the day saturday yeah, just like yeah. feel awful sunday i was mm -hmm. down in the dumps i couldn't stop thinking about all the things we did wrong and it was yeah. like, why am I letting my happiness be in the hands of these 18 year old boys? Like, exactly. It's not yeah. Yeah. at all. Yeah. Like that's not healthy at yeah. all. That's not going to work out for me in the long run. Uh, oh. Unless you're an Alabama fan, then you just then you're on just happy all the time for yeah. over a decade. Oh, yeah. 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 I would hate that. No, they whammy. find things to gripe about. They don't, they'll find <laughs> the dumbest things to get upset about. And I was like, y'all just, you're just trying to find like just, feel emotion. There's nothing there. Just petty now. I would hate the double whammy where your college team loses on Saturday and your pro team loses on Sunday. Then you're just yeah, like, I don't, don't really want to wake have up. A pro my team, so I'm good there. That's good. Uh, I'm a Panthers. Kind of, kind of like the Saints, tough. but I don't get, I don't get invested. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I see that Panthers behind you. That's yeah. Keep, keep pounding. <laughs> so Matt, take us back. What, what? Uh, were you a, a funny kid? Like, were you trying to cut jokes in uh, in class? Were you a class clown? Like. What yeah, was young I mean, Matt Mitchell like? When you're when you're 
the uh chubby ugly kid you really don't have a lot of options you know there's not there's not a lot of cards in your deck to play like you got to be funny yeah. or you got to eat the gross stuff for a dollar <laughs> yeah you know yeah. and i'm not going to be that kid so i was like I'll, I'll i guess i'll be the funny kid so yeah that was kind of that was kind of my thing in high school slacking off being funny but uh i got my start kind of doing video in uh a senior year of high school we had a we, we i went to a christian school in in rural alabama it was like the cheapest christian private school in the state of alabama <laughs> would okay. has to make it the cheapest private school in in america i yeah, mean like yeah. <laughs> there's there's like maybe mississippi's got us well, i was about to say we could check yeah, i was gonna door, say mississippi know? yeah yeah like, it'd be close maybe gotta be one yeah it was so we had it was a it was a non-denominational school but it was oh, it was run by church of god so it's not really yeah but it was not like we were required to speak in tongues or anything. It was just, it was just there. Yeah. Yeah. They probably allow it. Um, you could, you could, you know, complete a paper in tongues if you wanted to, I guess. But they had, um, uh, there was this thing in school where, where, uh, they would put a TV in every classroom. I think it was called like TV channel one or something, but you were required to watch the news program they sent you. And our principal signed up for it. But then when the first tape came in, she didn't like one of the commercials. He thought it was a little like risque. Uh, so we never did it. We just had the TVs in every classroom wired up. So we started our own little news program in the school. Okay. And uh, that was kind of my first little thing in the video. And okay, then I kind of okay. did some stuff here and there that didn't really take off. And then I started a parody account uh, making fun of our local newspaper back in 2012. And that Perfect. was the first thing I ever did that like blew up and nice. got an audience. And I just kind of kept with it. You know, it's like yeah. kids follow your dreams. You won't get paid to do it for a decade. And then finally, <laughs> yeah. you turn it into yeah. a full time job. That's why I tell kids at school. And I was like, hey, follow your dreams, kid. It won't pay a dime forever. Nothing. But you Nothing. chase them if you want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Good old Timmy Sherrill from Wilmington, North Carolina said, there's no money in comedy, kids. No money in comedy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Look at me now. Yeah. So what? Uh, so after you get your your taste for for video and like performing and th- and like having an audience, what where do you go after high school? To uh, University of Mobile, little Baptist college. Couldn't get enough of that uh, private Christian education oh, that you yeah, ever pay for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you get a taste so, once and can get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, you're like I would like I would like to be sheltered for longer, please. So uh, <laughs> yeah. went, went to the University of Mobile. <laughs> Took my sweet time down there getting my degree in social sciences and then uh moved back up here to uh walker county which is just a little northwest of birmingham okay. and uh worked in social services and like this working for the state of alabama for the department of human resources and like adult protective services and child welfare services while doing like the online humorous comedy stuff yeah. on this there's a very very different worlds but it was kind of a release to be able to do that you know have a little yeah. bit of fun in your life right because so. you just you're, the nine to five is just so just down and out grinding sure. yeah. did, did you have to separate your like personal life your job from the comedy by like like using an alias i mean or were you allowed to just you know get out there and it wouldn't mesh i could have but actually i did i kept it used an alias for a long time when i started the account i just kind of mm-hmm. kept it close like friends family that knew it was that i was the one running it and i kept it my identity is secret for about four years okay and then went public right when i got an opportunity to write a weekly article for al.com which is like the state's big That's newspaper awesome. mm-hmm. website and uh so then I, then i essentially came out told the world who i was and mm-hmm. and work had no problem with it i think That's i awesome. only got okay. in trouble like i didn't really get in trouble i got kind of like pulled aside by our hey. county director one time because i was i would write about politics too sometimes once a week and one of them was about the governor who at the time was uh robert bentley and i don't know if y'all are familiar with alabama's political history like it's a, name. a doozy oh, sure. um, he was the guy that was <laughs> sleeping with an advisor he's he looks like mm, the crypt keeper mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and oh, he was hot. sleeping with yeah. this advisor who's she's like in her 30s or 40s of course. robert bentley is on the wrong side of like 90 um oh my god and uh so well, it was Hugh just a Hefner mess. down there Politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he got busted too did not step down either um <sighs> and there's like he's like anything you should be impressed <laughs> it was yeah it it was yeah it was it was wild oh, um, so that was one thing he was like you know that is technically 
my director was kind of like, you know, that's technically like your boss's boss's boss. Um, mm-hmm. So it's time to chain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what year was that around? On the take... That was 2016. Okay. Uh, 2016, 2017. Cause that's when I left and started doing um, where I went to AL.com. They had a little startup called it's a Southern thing in 2017. And I left, they offered me a full-time job to work with them as they got that up off the ground. And uh, I did that late 2017 nice. up until yeah. last month. And then, then left. I, now I'm on my own. How was mm-hmm. that stepping into like a, like a, that, a new creative space? Uh, pretty wild. Like could not un- like totally thought they were like pranking me that this was not going to be a full-time job. <laughs> like as we kept going, I kept ca- talking to them, had several like interviews and like went out to lunch with them. And I was like, are you, this is all you want me is to do real? is come here and and just write jokes in in sketches and that's that's you're gonna pay me yeah and yeah i just did it i mean it just made sense it was like how many how how often is this opportunity going to come along in alabama like yeah and they came to you from the writing yeah yeah i was just writing that once a week article for the newspaper and um uh it was it was wild i mean it was a it was a fantastic opportunity it kind of opened my eyes up to like social media because i was very much in this one space of writing you know jokes on twitter and Mm -hmm. and facebook that doesn't pay anything right so then it kind of opened up the world of video and all that and eventually became a little less camera shy you know after yeah being forced to do it for so long (laughs) the best way to do it is just being forced into it yeah what was the first sketch you uh you did with the new the new team it was like the very first week uh we did a super simple like when it's fall in the south and it was it went crazy viral but we had uh only one person on camera through most of it lauren musgrove and she was just another video producer but we did it kind of a style of like a a disney princess thing like she she (laughs) gets fired up in the morning she like slings the covers off she she pulls her pumpkin decorations out and her pumpkin spice stuff and I mean, it's a joke that's been super played out, but right. it was mm-hmm. somewhat it was somewhat fresh five years ago. Right, so it feels very played out now. And then she steps outside with her scarf on and everything, and her like latte. And then you see uh, me and Adam Schwartz, another video producer, like super sweaty on the sidewalk, and we blasted the cicada <laughs> noises over the top of it. And she and then you cut back to her, and she's just drenched in sweat. And <laughs> that thing went. It it did. I don't remember. Like like maybe like. 30 40 million views wow. and buzzfeed immediately ripped it off like shot oh, of for shot just about oh yeah. gosh yeah and i was like oh this is how yeah but they never did that again but like it we made wild. it <laughs> yeah yeah BuzzFeed, buzzfeed knows we exist and yeah. feels comfortable yeah. enough to steal our, our stuff that uh they don't feel like anybody will see it but yeah it'll <laughs> uh that was like week one that was that was like that video went out on the friday of my first week on the job so that is um, insane yeah, that was wild yeah did did were there any repercussions from on the buzzfeed end of things like were you able to or there was it just like hey you did okay <laughs> don't do it kidding? again i don't think i don't think anything ever came of it i don't know if anybody ever reached out to him or anything i don't know the whole world of like yeah you know, i don't know if it's the same everywhere i don't right. want to be careful what i say here you know what? I always have in my mind like big old corporations and their attorneys will just shut down everything. I don't think that's the case. I think a lot of times attorneys are either scared or I don't I don't know. They just don't mess with a lot of stuff. Especially right. when it comes to internet and IP and things yeah. like that. It gets real yeah. it gets real weird. I, and... I got in, in trouble when I worked at a vet clinic because I made a sketch about how terrible working at a vet clinic was during the pandemic. And I didn't mention my company's name. I didn't have any logo, any imagery in it whatsoever. And I could see immediately that they were like, we're pulling you in here to talk to you, but we can't do anything to you. So we're just going to get mad at you. (laughs) But we can't fire our disappointment. They asked me, I was an assistant manager and they asked me to step down. Like they couldn't make me. They're like, because you filmed something there. No, I didn't even use their facilities. I just made a sketch about working at a vet clinic and I took like some, uh, I, what, what the key, the, did you put were, all the dogs down in the sketch or something? Or what was, I just showed how terrible it was like being, a nurse. 
Yeah, Drew, Drew's actually just the absolute worst. He's like, yeah, can you believe what they did? He's like, I only put down like six dogs. But they were scheduled anyway, okay? Well. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I just I took a least, shot at yeah. one of the doctors, so they didn't appreciate that because uh, she got us some Frosties one time. And I was like, yeah, they got us mini Frosties. They couldn't even get us the full ones. And she came wow. running in like, I paid for that with my own money. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You saint. Uh, like unless you still, you, don't, you don't work there anymore, do you? No, 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 no. no. Did, they, did she really just give you the mini Frosties? Didn't even she, splurge for the big ones? She really got us mini Frosties when we were having a, a rough day. Had to save that 56 cents. Yeah, not even, man. I'm sure it was like 75 to like a dollar. There's probably like a there's probably like a deal too if you buy like bulk frosties. <laughs> when is gonna be like it was dirt, it was like right at the pandemic, so she could have been like we're nurses, and we probably yeah like, yeah, yeah. would have got them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I remember wearing my scrubs out during all that time, and they'd be like, "Thank you so much." I was like, "You're yeah. a hero." Yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, <laughs> front line front lines up there. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. Front lines of you, bringing man. just more sadness. Yeah, just yeah. like oh, it's 2020, and my dog's gone. That was like pulling out like the purple heart back in 2020. Like just put on some scrubs oh, and get this? some free drinks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like a CVS shirt. <laughs> All I ever got was a high five out of it. Yeah. But no, I agree with you. I don't think the the reach of those lawyers are are as extensive as we might put in our head sometimes, you know. It's just it's so it's all it's all muddy water. Like you don't really know. Yeah. No, nobody knows i mean you can go research stuff online like try to find out is this fair use and the internet's just like i don't know maybe like <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. You find out the hard way i guess so yeah yeah well, I'm, I'm learning all the social media groups have different i posted a video today and it's like doing whatever but it got flagged on tiktok it hasn't gotten flagged on anything else and it was just because one specific word i said they were like this is against our code of conduct or whatever but Facebook and Instagram were like, man, what if seems seems well, fine with well, us? You know, Facebook's gonna be fine with it. You know, There's yeah. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> Someone got murdered yeah. on Facebook Live. You know, so that's true. That's true. But no yeah, really. it's just even that. It's, it's like you know, I imagine being a lawyer. You're like, I don't know what was it on. You know, <laughs> you know, just like this is dead. Don't worry about it. I got yeah. something flagged uh, on TikTok one time for uh, gang affiliation. Um, oh, yeah, me um yeah like do you were like throwing the, up signs no yeah, it's my little debbie gang or something i don't know <laughs> uh, debbie gang? hey i'll the join up boys. i'll sign up yeah. yeah i'm there let's go so yeah so the the first first uh video is a hit so where, where y'all go from there we kind of you know we have a uh kind of a weird schedule we're trying to just drop videos around when we can a few months past that and then me and Adam Schwartz and Luke Porter uh, on the team, we we kind of form up and we create this sketch comedy thing called So Tree All, and we start putting them out on a weekly basis and uh, get a get a schedule down that go out on Tuesdays, and that really that really grew the brand, and and it was in the early days of like Facebook Video, Facebook Watch, and all that stuff, and yeah. they were just they, if you were making quality content on Facebook, then it was just like taking off uh so i mean we we it was a grind we kept at that for years and i was still uh working on those here and there up until i left but i also did some other stuff had a had a unscripted show called bless your rank where i would rank random foods or drinks yeah. you know chicken sandwiches or uh bourbons one time that was a disaster um <laughs> uh, those are those are a lot of fun on. what's yeah. been your favorite thing you've ranked what was like your favorite episode? Oh, we had an ice cream episode one time that was awesome. That was that was I ate way too much on that one. <laughs> um, they've all been really good. The only one that was like particularly terrible was the sweet tea one because uh, it's all bottle sweet teas, and I'm very picky about my right. bottle sweet tea. Like, sure. there's really only two out there that at least that I could get around here that are good, and that's Milo's and Red Diamond. Uh, yeah, all those other ones you get, especially like Nesty oh. and Arizona, those stepped are just on trash. Yeah. Uh, they're awful, and I I had to drink those, mm. and I it was not good. Yeah. Uh, I make a lot of faces in that video because it's just and they're all genuine. <laughs> I just, just don't, don't like them. Tea. It tastes like oh. it tastes like dishwater. Like it's yeah. it's it's not even sweet. It's I miss my grandma's sweet. sweet tea so bad. She'd have a fresh pitcher in the refrigerator all the time. 
Nothing beats that. And that this that picture's like stained from from like years of tea being oh, in yeah. it. And then she fondly yeah. throws it away and just uses an empty milk jug, you know. <laughs> yeah. Or orange juice jug. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you know the the old stereotype. You never knew what cool whip container you were opening, whether it was gonna have Brunswick stew in it or rice and gravy or actual cool whip. It- even the, even like grandmas that didn't even use Cool Whip or uh, Country Crock would still have those containers. Oh, yeah, it was like, where did you get yeah, this from? I think they pass them around the grandmother community. Yeah, or they just steal them from the church potluck. More than likely, that's where a lot of that happens. There it is. There mm-hmm. it is. So you're doing all the sketches, and then you're doing some more little Debbie stuff. And then, how did you get into like the when when were you like, let's do some SEC sketches? That was uh, I had this idea years ago we had sec shorts i don't know if y'all are familiar with them they were a part of that company too um okay. robert robert clay the half of that team it's him and josh need robert was a full-time employee that worked with us on that team and then he left and they you know went solo did their own thing with it i kind of still wanted to like to have some kind of like you know, work on some kind of like football show you know similar to that i had an idea where the teams would work in an office basically and it would be reactive to like whatever whatever happened on Saturday would would shape whatever happened in the office or we thought about it as a high school too yeah then the pandemic happened and we were like working from home indefinitely so I kind of thought at the last minute like what can I do to like get this going on my own and I, I've seen people do something similar on TikTok before and I was like, I could just I could totally do that. Just film it myself. Um, yeah, yeah. Didn't plan on making it a series. Just thought a one-off. Like, let me just see how this does. And yeah. and there were so many people asking for it to come back, like, next week. So I just kept it going. You know, kind of regretted it after, like, four weeks. I'm like, <laughs> like, I got to keep going. <laughs> why, have I, why have I agreed to do this? But um, but it is fun. I really enjoy it. And it's also a, a fantastic excuse to sit around and watch football all day Saturday. Yeah. Like, it's it's working. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And this is this is research exactly yeah. uh but uh, it eats up my sunday now but that's fun i enjoy i enjoy doing them. that was my uh introduction to you is my brother-in-law knew i was a big college football fan he's like you've got to see this guy's videos and he and i just went down that wormhole from there oh nice now which uh which social media kind of took off first for you tiktok was the biggest one and mm-hmm. that was the one i kind of ignored for the longest because it was like a musically app or something it was like it was mostly lip syncing well, to songs when it first started yeah, and i'm kids, not yeah, yeah 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 and i've got it was kids lip syncing and it was like neither one of those are my demographic or my thing um right but then it kind of shifted during the pandemic way more people got on it and it kind of became a lot more and so i hopped back on there had uh, actually i saw uh, I was just kind of watching videos on it mostly at first. And then somebody had stolen a clip from bless your rank and uploaded it. And that thing had like 3 million views or something. And it was just me rambling about like the, when you, when you fix a bowl of cereal uh, and then you eat all of the cereal and you've got milk left over, what do you do? Well, if it's a lot, if it's a little bit, you'll drink it. But if it's a lot, you're like, let me just go get some more cereal, pour it on top of this milk, like put it, put it to use. Yeah. Then you're then you've you know you've missed the ratio. Now you've got too much cereal, not enough milk. So you pour some more milk in it, and this cycle repeats until you're you know obese. <laughs> and um, and that joke, whatever, got stolen, put up there, did crazy numbers, and I was like, okay, so if this works, then I could just do it. Just continue rambling yeah. on here. Like, I'm and... already me. Right, right. Exactly. Like this isn't even like a. This I'm already a... viral. Yeah. Yeah. This is just a little rant. I can do that. So I started making some content for it, and it it took off and that helped feed other platforms that are a little bit harder to grow like YouTube, especially. Um, yeah. So you're and... congratulations. I see your, your, you. yeah. that's, that's uh, I was excited about that one. Cause YouTube is just tough to get people so on tough. shorts makes it easier. They're new. They're those shorts go and they're pushing those like crazy to try to yeah. stay relevant. But yeah, it took TikTok was the big one, which I'd never ever would have expected. Yeah. Um, and now basically just about abandoned Twitter. That's where I started. And now it's just like, why am I still doing this? Yeah. But I mean, you yeah. got to follow him on Twitter too. So did the, do you, did it just come in waves? Like TikTok took off and you saw your other social medias go with it? 
Yeah, yeah. And especially once you kind of learn, like right now, the big thing is the short form videos. Everybody's yeah. trying hard to stay to compete with TikTok because they're stealing so much of their audience right now. And the future is is going to be shorter video, I think. I think YouTube will be the only place, kind of really is now already, that you go to for long form video. Yeah. Um, everybody so I, else. I yeah. Yeah. What's that short form stuff? So. That's Sorry. that's what you got to serve up to the the algorithm, the almighty algorithm, and then it'll oh, shift. Almighty. They'll pull the rug out from underneath you, and you'll have to do something else later. But yeah, I know. Like when TikTok was like, oh, we're doing longer videos. Like, e- like, like even when I'm watching other comedians, I'm like, oh my god, well, it's been like 45 seconds already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it is over. ruining our attention spans. Like we so were bad. already bad enough on the internet. It will yeah. TikTok will destroy. I was going to say this nation, but probably the world, the world. I think. Well, I mean, oh, now like you can't. Modern conversation. I didn't know you were going to say the world. Well, you were like, yeah, like modern conversation. The you were world. like, the world, the earth, it's done. <laughs> yeah, all of us. <laughs> I'm very doom and gloom here lately yeah. anyway. Like, that's been my thing. Anybody that tries to talk politics with me, I was going to do a sketch about this. It's just like, because they just assume they see like, oh, uh, why guy in the rural south? let's go brandon and yeah I'm just, like, just, sh- just just shut up just yeah just stop. oh you're a democrat i hate everybody i hate everything I, same, we're all yeah. doomed oh, we're all yeah. doomed. We're oh you vote you're the sucker for voting <laughs> that's See? that's my stance right now that's gonna put the sign in my yard that just just make it look like a political sign just says, <laughs> give, give up. up yeah give up that's all, that's all you really can do right now Surrender to the first my, my, nation my. that comes to our front door and like let's just see if they can do a better job with it <laughs> i don't I'm, Take I'm, I'll give up. Yeah, turn it. We turn it to Rodney Dangerfield. Take her, please. Get <laughs> no, but I I have noticed that like I can't do just you. When you were a kid, you could just watch TV, or you could just play with your like action figures. Like now, my attention span is so messed up. I got to be like I can be watching TV and playing on my phone, or I got to be like editing a video and watching TV. It's not like yeah. one thing can't keep me occupied anymore and it drives me insane I, I was like editing a video earlier and i was like all right got some time to edit some videos and i got some time to finally watch the new lord of the rings show on amazon and it like was it was like 17 seconds in and like the inner nerd in me was like no we're gonna respect the show the way we respect the films that made you fall in love with this industry in the first place so i turned it off put on music finished my videos and finally just sat down sort of watching it and was like all right, I'm not gonna pull our phone out. Phone. <laughs> you really phone. I'm glad I'm not alone. I will, I will, I will put my phone in another room, and when I really want to focus and watch something on TV, it's yeah. I hate myself for it, but it's yeah. the only way I can do it. It's, it's, it's tough. the only way. You got to separate. Like I love to put my phone on a charger away from me, so I can be like, you have to let it charge. You got to leave yeah. it alone. Yeah, just let it be. Got to stay there. It's got to stay. Play some FIFA or something. Try to get my mind off. Get, get some other blue light. I don't want this blue light. I want, a, I want the FIFA <laughs> yeah. blue light. <laughs> oh, man. So I also have seen that you do some trivia nights. So how did uh, how did you get into that? Oh, yeah. I've been doing that for it coming on five years this fall, which is crazy. Uh, you know, I it was right around the time I started this Southern thing, and we were getting a brewery in Jasper. And that's a big deal for where i live first of all for any like rural alabama town to get something like that's pretty great because Mm -hmm. it's expanding but it was mostly it was mostly birmingham huntsville was the place for those but you're starting to see them pop up in in smaller towns and especially warren county which was a dry county for most of my life so i was like this is cool i want to make sure we got something going on there and i had talked to the owner a few times before one of the owners and i just hit him up i was like hey man I'm I'm game for trying to plan some kind of trivia night, something to bring people out. You know, I don't want to do yeah. it like on a week weekend that ties me up every single uh, week. So we we landed on a Thursday night. Crowd was great, and I have just kept doing it uh, awesome, for years. And it's probably it's probably more for me than it is that I just have fun doing it. It's just fun to go out there and just come up with crazy topics. And um, and then I'm doing it in Coleman too at, at Goat Island Brewery like once a month up there too and do you have uh, different themes format. with the different nights yeah yeah we uh i switch it up a little bit I try to do a theme just about because it brings out more 
more people yeah. like just the just straight up normal up. trivia yeah. is fun i love doing just the random trivia nights but you don't bring a huge crowd for that you got to do like yeah. second season of friends y'all come on down only questions <laughs> about ross you're gonna love it and um yeah. where are they on a break <laughs> yeah uh so doing stuff like that uh which is friends is what i have tomorrow night uh nice. at Tallulah brewing and then uh doing name that tune sometimes i've got name that tune classic rock and coleman this this month with 17th and then next thursday night Tallulah would be name the tune uh 2000s hits Ooh, um, okay. that's a, that'd a be good, fun. That was a good decade. I like that. Yeah, and it's you good. put these all together yourself. Like, are you doing the research, or is it through like a company, or what's the? Ninety percent of the time, it's me. That's cool. There'll cool. be a few topics that it's like there's just too much for here. Like, if it's a, a like a small yeah. movie series or something I haven't seen before, I'll sit down. Like, I watched all the Harry Potter's movies for the first time because of Trivia Night, and yeah. they're pretty good. Um. I have trouble. Uh, <laughs> concerned. Well, I'm concerned about the how how hard it is to keep somebody in that that one position. The uh, dark arts is that it is professor of dark arts, whatever it is. The well, it's it's a tough position. Yeah every <laughs> every movie it's like here's a new person that's teaching this, and it's like yeah, yeah okay, that's this will be the person that will either die or uh, is the bad guy. And there's one but, guy that always wants it, Professor Snape. Matt, they don't give yeah, it to him. He's, he's right there. Matt, I just want you to know you have hit on Will's favorite topic. Oh, Harry Potter? No, 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 no. it's not even my favorite topic. It's just I've been I've been taking a break from it because I'm taking a break from open mics. But I have one of the first jokes I ever wrote was a it was in 2009. It was a Harry Potter pun. And it was just about hooking up with somebody, but only using Harry Potter characters is like what was happening. You know, like I dumbled on the door and like we were McGonagall like that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I did it at a mic. And I'm like, I'm not even kidding. The op- like the other comics, the open mic, like rioted. It was his heel like, turn. He became they, the villain yeah, of the comedy. Scene. I became the villain like that. And instead of going like, oh, sorry, guys, use him. I was like, well, now I'm doing this every single open mic <laughs> until the end of time. And like, I was getting like DMs being like, don't do it. He gets groans next mic. like you hear audibly. What was the, like, was oh. the audience liking it though? The audience doesn't know what's happening because the, <laughs> cause, because the the other comics are actually like upset and like in the back, like just like stop. And but I did have a I had a bartender re- DM me and she was like, This is my favorite part of the week is when that you makes just the, derail that's the, whole the mic. Bit now. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. do they do, do they earn are they earnestly upset about it? Or is it like they're in so, on it and they know they're enhancing the bit times a hundred by half. fighting you on it. It's half so and that, half. So some, some of them people like, genuinely hate his, hate him for it. Yeah, <laughs> like some people drop what they want to work on and they just talk about how much they hate me for four minutes. Like, <laughs> and, and, and then like so, like some people are just like, all right, we'll just do this thing again. But like for the most part, people like there's a couple that are like, if if Will walked into traffic after this, I can promise I wouldn't be at his funeral. <laughs> 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 or I would go just to say that joke to his caught his casket i would say this joke to his (laughs) grieving mother yeah (laughs) but uh i'm definitely saying that at your funeral now yeah please so if you can write it down because i don't know they'll play it they'll play the the youtube video from 2009 in black and white they'll just make it black and white oh perfect put finn (laughs) make it real artsy at the end of it yeah yeah Yeah. he was ahead of his his head uh so Matt, uh, got to get back on track here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you're coming up with the, the videos, do you do like a, a, a script first? Do you like work this out? Like how do you plan for the different characters you got to play all at once? Uh, yeah, script definitely. I've tried to wing it a few times. It's not good. Then you sit down to edit and you're like, <laughs> these do not match up. I've got I've got two characters saying completely different things to each other. It does not line up at all. <laughs> um which was like that's kind of how i was treating my personal stuff was just kind of like doing it on the fly but then all but then spending a lot of time in really diving in deep on stuff i was doing for it's a southern thing and so i was like this is just not the balance is off and so now that i'm I'm doing it on my own it's like i've really got to put the time and the effort into it like i was doing like because it is my job now you know i gotta mm-hmm. uh it would be nice to pay the mortgage so I'm, I've been doing that, but I've always, I mean, if it's a longer sketch, not just a short little 30 second TikTok, it's got to have a script. And I've, you know, 
luckily I've been taught by some really great people that it's Southern thing who, who, you know, we had, we had several people there, Adam and Robert, who uh, were college professors before they came. Uh, they were teaching this at Alabama. Oh, so, so I got, got like, a crash college course education. On it, yeah. Pretty much on it. Cause you know, I'm a dude that was doing social work before. So, I mean, I, I've, you know, written jokes for years, but I've never written a sketch, like a, an actual script before. And now I've abandoned most of that. Now I'm just in Microsoft Word, just like typing out lines. And like, if I feel like I need to make a note about something, I just in parentheses, like, you know, throws a fit or, you know, whatever. It's um, a silly man. accent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome, man. But it's, so, it's like you said, it's, it's funny. Like, that's what I love about social media and how big it is because you got people that never in a million years thought that this was the path they would go down. And then now you got kids that are growing up to be like, I'm going to be in social media some way. I'm going to be in the hype house. (laughs) (laughs) So it's just, it's, it's funny now, like, cause it's a career path. Yeah. Which is why, cause it wasn't a thing at all when I was a kid, like there was no social media and we had live journal. We had AOL I mean, Instant Messenger know, at the end yeah. for me. Uh, you can imagine being an AOL Instant Messenger influencer. Um, <laughs> and his away it. statuses are fire. Yeah, that would be. That's a great little <laughs> mini He's got that new hair. Like a, a 2004 influencer. What all did that entail? Yeah. Uh, um, let's, let's, let's write it, dude. Look at that collaboration yeah. <laughs> right there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, that is that is crazy to talk to them. And and I did a career day one time and which was pretty funny because here I am like, like at a table, like a booth and like next to me is like, you know, real professions. <laughs> and then there's me. And basically it's like, what'd you go to school for? I was like, not this. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, They're like, should I go to school? I was like, you know, maybe probably not. Honestly, no, don't, don't do it. But Same you know, there's certain things that school can help. Like there's certainly like video editing is something yes. I don't, is a skill I'm still trying to, grasp that's, that's what i ended yeah. up going to school for i went back during yeah. the pandemic i was like i need to know how to do this mm-hmm. yeah like, i'm about shortcuts. to do some i didn't even i didn't even learn to do that while i was at this southern thing i was just like we got people that went to they school for that they'll that. handle it it's and fine. yeah so now i'm like crash course trying to teach myself all that stuff and it's yeah it's something the great thing is, is every bit every phone we get makes it easier and easier i edit just about everything on my phone yeah Mm. it's a way to go which is like especially a, if you're you're filming it on your phone why move it to a desktop if it's already until your there. phone gets like super hot and then it starts crashing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the thing is like my phone starts heating up i'm like don't you do this right now it's like a like a 1997 packard bell all of a sudden it's like i thought you were the latest and greatest technology you're like grandma's computer now like i'm like I can almost hear the like the loud humming yeah, noise. Have the takeoff off of noise. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, when did the mm-hmm. phone sound like this? Exactly. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's uh what's what's next on the docket? What's the the future plans? Ooh, uh, you know, just kind of keeping on, keeping on. The big thing right now is just kind of like get a schedule going where I've got r- videos coming out routinely. Like the SEC roll call is a lock, it's gonna come out every Sunday. Yeah. But um you know, I've got to get other stuff out there because not everybody loves football. There's a few weirdos out there that don't care for it. So, uh, I know you got to cater to them. So who? like, who, who is, <laughs> who is that guy? <laughs> some people, some people like Harry Potter. I don't know. That's uh, their thing. It's either Harry Potter or football down here. Y'all. It's one of the <laughs> Hermione. He doesn't mean nope. it. <laughs> <laughs> I call my pillow that I cry into. <laughs> The other Super Bowl didn't get invited, but you know what? I'll just watch Harry Potter again. <laughs> What's your Ron Weasley pun? Oh, oh God. It was, uh, I could feel her Draco and her Malfoy. So I knew it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew it was okay to Weasley. And the funny part is the original was something goofy. I don't remember what the original was, but oh, my that's roommate wrote something goofy was the original. Not the, the original indie. was uh Trelawani, but it was too or tr- it was too specific of a character. Everyone was like, I don't know what that one. My roommate was like, What if you say just like you Weasley? Like it's like say you like you Weasley, that's pretty funny. And I was like, All right. So I just took it from my roommate. Yeah, so my roommate <laughs> actually wrote that little part, but at some point I had support on the joke. <laughs> it was nice. support. That's yeah. a good one. Thank you. I love that 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 whole set got rewrites. Uh oh, and it's it, getting more it- and you're judging it. Did you judge that based off the audience laughter or the groans from the back? Like what, which one was more important? 
we have a we have a, a comic we've interviewed on this podcast and he's a good friend of both of us evan is a, is a huge fan of people turning heel so in this for <laughs> his name is evan big, Burke. big pro wrestling evan he's Burke's my a, pro wrestling buddy yeah. he's a huge pro wrestling fan so he loves turning heel so that moment happened and i got off and evan was already writing more tags for it and just to keep this thing going <laughs> and just to make people like people come up like don't do that the next mic that and evan was like okay energy. i got like three more tags for you <laughs> <laughs> and now it's got a whole writing staff yeah yeah nice i must ask favorite little debbie of all time yeah Ooh. i mean year round like the like everything that comes out i think the christmas tree cake and what nice. makes it special is that it's Pretty just good. like a small amount of time throughout the year like when mm-hmm. it hits the shelf it's christmas time even though it comes out like mid-october so, it's, it's out. just <laughs> it's just so good you know sometimes it's the swiss cake roll you know unless it's really hot out and the thing's going to make it. a mess it's gonna then go you switch place. to the oatmeal cream pie like Oof. it's oh man just spitting off fire right I'm, here uh, is, yeah i'm like a little debbie sommelier i think i love like, it like that's just yeah. like what kind of what kind of mood you in what do you what are you what are you feeling I'll, what are you drinking <laughs> I got you covered. Like what year is it? Yeah, yeah. That's a sketch You're right gonna... there. Little Debbie Smalley. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're making gold right Look here today, this. gentlemen. Look at this. The we brain trust here. With we fish. It. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm a yeah. I'm a nutty buddy fan. I agree with the uh, Christmas cake. Okay. Was, okay. I like I like something that I can't have all the time. Yeah, I. Yeah, it's like eggnog. I don't think anyone would really like eggnog if it was year round. Yeah. Well, see, that, yeah. I, I'm a big <laughs> year round eggnog guy. Like, <laughs> I met you a bar. I walk in and say, you guys, give me the best, give me the finest egg, give me the top shelf eggnog. <laughs> no. <laughs> Evan Williams. That's about all you're going to get. Evan Williams eggnog. <sighs> Spitting Evan Williams. Eggnog yeah. is one drink, one glass of eggnog a year. Tops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's I always it, yeah. get and, the the quart and I drink half of it. Yep. Every yep. Then it sits there for the next year, and then no, Christmas rolls around. You're like, oh, I never threw this out. And, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'll forget okay. about it and drink it. I can't. No, I got to throw it out. If it's gone, I can't try. Mm. I'll take a nice swig in February and be like, oh no no no. I mean, oh, does it go bad? I don't know. How... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it probably <laughs> it probably won't pass the sniff test. I don't know what bad eggnog yeah. i mean yeah. yeah like tricking yourself like is this bad nah it's just eggnog I'll, it's fine I'll, i mean I mean, you're getting the carton and it's got it's definitely an expiration date on it and you're like oh no let me do the sniff test i don't trust expiration dates though it's eggnog yeah all right fine whatever teach their own <laughs> one of those. i mean i'm a stickler for the expiration date that's fair. yeah same I I'm uh, my wife will try. I'm pretty sure she's trying to kill me. She'll feed me <laughs> things way past their day. She's like, I promise it's good. It's but they live good. way out in the country, so it's they only they went to the grocery store once a month. So mm-hmm. like they would buy bread, several loaves, and freeze all the loaves but one, and then pull it out when it was time. Like it was like little house on the prairie stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I was like, going to that. town. Yeah, exactly. It was Ma, Pa, come on, we gotta get some old we bread. Gotta go to town, and uh, <laughs> uh, so she'll she'll do that all the time. So I'll and she'll get mad at me because I'll be like, "What's the what's the date on that uh, hamburger meat you're cooking there?" She's like, "Don't worry about it." And that's when I know it's time to go to Taco <laughs> Bell. I'm not doing this, but mm-mm. not today. We, we have access yeah. here. <laughs> we can go yeah, exactly. To <laughs> I'm pretty sure. DoorDash will bring us something from Walgreens. That's our options are very limited over here, but you know, yeah, we can make do. Yeah, <laughs> I like I like the Taco Bell was the first thought where it was like, if I'm gonna shit myself, I want to yeah. make sure it's by my choice. <laughs> exactly, we're doing this on my terms. It's gonna be yeah. that burrito supreme. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you just gotta build up the tolerance, my man. Like you gotta power through. Like if Taco Bell's hurting your stomach, that means you need to double down and eat it twice as much. This is why we That's... don't tour together anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't let me eat Taco Bell when we were on the road, and I don't. I like, Let's go get some salads, Drew. And he was like, "A what? <laughs> oh, what's up now? What? He's like, what's, what's on top of it? What's on it? You mean the thing they put on top of the tacos at Taco Bell? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go get that. Yeah, <laughs> one half of a cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah. He, he, this guy eats a lot of uh, 
he won't go to the fast food places, but he'll go to gas stations and eat like a questionable hey, turkey sandwich from no, a gas. I do. I I will do that. I will do that. Yeah, That's but my cheeseburger is weird. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with cheeseburger. Like the, the refrigerated prepackaged sandwich section. Yep. And the reason the reason I, I do it is I check the expiration date, and if it is not made that day, I don't touch who's, it. Go, who's making that? I don't right. know. Right. I've never right. met anyone that says, oh, I make the gas station sandwiches. Oh, never. That's interesting. Spot never. On. Where's you ever seen a building and then you pass you like, what's in that? Oh, that's where that's a little old ladies make the turkey sandwiches for 7-Eleven. <laughs> never. Never. Where do they come from? Preach. I need some more transparency Preach. in the gas station sandwiches. This is true. Day. This is true. Mm-hmm. I want now, if it's a gas coming. station hot bar, I'm all for it. Yeah. Let me in. But, yeah. but yeah. you know, that's. How do you sandwiches. feel about like the roller section, like taquitos and hot dogs on the roller? Ooh. Depends. I mean, you could eyeball them if they pass the eyeball test. Like you, you could see those hot dogs looking like, looking like a, like a sixty-year-old smoker that they used to go to tanning bed every yeah, day that has a tanning uh, bed at home. They use it. Yeah, somewhere. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Start, starting to look a little bit like her name is Loretta. And- <laughs> Tammy Lynn. Put yeah down on a second pack of Pall Malls. I don't want any part of that. Um, they need to be they need to be glistening. They're not dried out. Yeah, I, I, she's calmed down. She's down to one pack of Virginia Slims a day. Okay. Yeah. Doing okay. <laughs> this is the first cigarette I've tried. Uh, we stole it from my friend's mom. We a thought Virginia we were Slim. Cool. Yeah, we thought we were cool smoking a Virginia Slim. Did you pull it out of like the little uh, case, the little like red leather case with the little yes. stapper thing at the, yeah. That she had the lighter into. You know? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. One stop shop. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Will, you really missed out by not growing up in the South, my guy. I would like to see what well, you, what I, would I be know. Will Southern Will Abel's. I'm sure I have friends in Hagerstown that they're like, listen, going, yeah, yeah, yeah we did that. And then there, there was, and then there's me, who, <laughs> who was in my. So you wouldn't Smith's have done it playing regardless. Legos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would like. I think like I remember. I don't know. All, my friends were also oddly protective of me. Like they were already like they were like smoking cigars. Well, they're smoking black and miles. They weren't smoking cigars. They're smoking oh, black was, and miles. So you you were the coolest when you were smoking black <laughs> yeah. and miles. Yeah. And I remember like I was like I'm gonna smoke a black and mild. And I remember like my buddy Bob Bechtel saw me from like 50 yards away in a car and the next thing I know the car is flying at me and I'm just standing there like smoking this black mouth and he jumped out and tacked with a grad ripped out he was like these aren't for you and like just put it out he was like you're not doing this and I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right god he made a yeah, call so, he made a judgment call for you uh, like good yeah. so you know they they were protective they're protective and okay. you know given the next 15 years after that they were right <laughs> they, they were right to do so not your, not your style huh yeah any any is there anything that you're jealous of in the south like you're like man i wish i would have had that growing up me yeah. um yeah the, the one person not from the south out of the three yeah, of us yeah, you're yeah, telling yeah, me yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. oh what i don't know i mean everyone's like yeah i mean college because like you know we had maryland but like maryland wasn't like ever like like they were the basketball team Traders. when i was Traders. when i was younger yeah they when left, they switched they, to left leagues, the ACC. they switched divisions yeah i was Brett like Martin. i don't care but I was kind of jealous of football. It always seemed like really fun. Like, cause our high school had one good season, and that was the one time we were like, "Oh, I kind of get the big school mentality." So maybe that, maybe maybe it was football. Yeah, I went to it East Carolina good. University, and we had that big football team feel without having a big football team. It was nice. Yeah, we would pregame and tailgate like no other, and then go in and have a one in ten season. That was that was kind of my college. That was my high school team. Well, actually, no, they got a little bit better. But again, it was like small county. You know, it just wasn't big. Yeah. So, what was basketball the biggest sport? Well, yeah, I mean, it, like in terms of college, yeah, like everyone followed Maryland basketball because that was back with like Juan Dixon and when they like won the championship and everything and they won yeah. the title. So I feel like growing up, like we were more paying attention to that. That could have also been my household specifically because I also grew up in a baseball household. And those were like still the Ripken era. Like it was sort of the tail end of Ripken's era. So like the Orioles were like, we'll make the playoffs. And then the next year, the Yankees would buy everybody. Yeah. Like it was, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Matt, do you have a secondary sport that you're a fan of? 
Uh, I love the Braves. Big, uh, big Braves fan. Oh, yeah. um, yes, that's about. That's the only other sport that I really care about. Well, when the Braves are as good as they are now, you know. Yeah, yeah now they fun. are. <laughs> now they are. Yeah, I grew up actually. You know, I grew up a, a Mariners fan because of King Griffey Jr. Oh, oh um, King Griffey. Uh, most but, beautiful swing in the game. Yeah, the so the kid, the legend. He, uh, you know, then he then he moved around to Cincy and Chicago briefly. Yeah, and then my my grandparents were big Braves fans. They did the t- like the stereotypical Southern grandparent, like watched every single game, just f- fell asleep watching it. It's my grandpa it's, it's, would want to yeah. talk to you about it whenever they saw you, and that kind of like pulled me in because I wanted to have that bond with them. Yeah, and same. also that was my team. It's like Griffey's gone from the Mariners, has been forever. It's like why do I still care about this team? Right, right. Uh, I don't. I'm never going to get up to Seattle to watch them, and uh, so kind of Braves fan like early. 2000s it was just and, great uh, when every game was on tbs you didn't have oh, to yeah about it. like what yeah, are we now, doing at 705 oh Watching yeah i forgot about that yeah now i've got to like steal a password to watch bally sports online. i hate it like, so I don't, much it's it's so bad and it'll just game will just freeze just yeah. randomly just freeze up the worst times yeah and we're getting worse at we're, we're technology is doing so many things better but it is it is we're we're screwing up tv so bad oh my god Cause I mean, you got to have this subscription. You got to have this streaming platform. You got to have this on the side. Well, Oh, they got Ted Lasso back on Apple. So you got to get Ted Lasso again. You got to get right. Apple again. So uh, I'm a big moving around. Yeah. I'm a big NFL red zone guy. So I got to have the extra sports package during the NFL season. Yeah. And we're buying cable without buying cable. And it's so just, ridiculous. Oh yeah. Who well, and it's so bad. Cause it's like, we ask for it. It's, you know, mm-hmm. you know, all those years we were paying, Drake TV ridiculous amount of money, and we were like, "We just would be great if I could just buy the channels I want." Well, they gave it to us, and now like idiots, we're buying all the channels. Yeah, we're paying more for it. We're the suckers. <laughs> yeah. We did this to yeah. ourselves. We did it we again. Destroy this country. Just go destroy ahead, destroy it, burn it to the ground. Let's start over again. Do it the right way. Man, are you trying uh, to run in twenty twenty four? I'll be your runner. I'm trying to go. To, I'm trying to like you know go to prison for like just threats against the country. Yeah. It sounds like more than anything. Um, where did he first start? It was the My Funny Friends podcast. So. <laughs> this is how I got on the no-fly list. It's this podcast episode right here. You're They're just going to have that cell- pulled up. Yeah. Like- Your cellmate's Alex Jones. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, who books that? You know? yeah. <laughs> I remember with some of the streaming, I remember like when NBC first got the Premier League and they realized how much money they could make. They like made a separate one. It was like NBC's. I think it's like by NBC Sports, yeah. but then they did another package on top of that was that was NBC Gold. Do you remember that? Because they Man, got rid of. I'm that, sure. That, like it sounds familiar. Like I remember you had to have the special package. Peacock, but yeah, and it was like people were losing their minds. They were like they're just losing their minds because it and was it's like, crazy. Wow, how much are we gonna pay to watch this? Yeah, it's crazy because I'm I'm a big wrestling fan. So I had the WWE Network, and then it moved to Peacock. So I already had Peacock, so that was a win. But then, yeah, the change it sucked. Like the new platform sucks so bad. Like you can't change channels on Peacock. Like once you start watching something on Peacock, they're like, "This is you're watching this." Like don't try to change anything. This is it. <laughs> yeah, and I hate it so much because like Premier decision. League Saturdays, to I want to bounce from game to game. They're like, "Nope, nope, you gotta like go back, flip it to it." And then once in a while they'll be like, "Hey, it's on USA," and you're like, "Oh, now we're going back to cable." You know, it's tough. It's a tough life to live. Right. Just sitting there on a Saturday morning, yeah. just with not a care in the world. And then you finally find it, and then you spend most of the time watching your phone instead of whatever you're supposed to oh, watch yeah. on TV. Like, what's the point of that anyway? Yeah, yeah I'm opening a bleacher, up bleacher report, report and checking the score. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! So Matt, before we get out of here, man, who are your favorite like comedic influences? Like, who do you watch like their videos and like you, you're like, man, I, I really enjoy this stuff. Oh wow! Uh, there's been there's been so many. Um, you know, I think for me that like the, my favorite guy out there right now is probably Nate Bargatze. He's just Preach. super fun. I had the chance to to meet him virtually a couple of years ago and just super friendly and down to earth like he's exactly yeah. mm-hmm. i was super nervous because i was like what if he's just a jerk this is gonna suck um yeah. but no he was he was nice that was great you know spot there I'm trying to think like back in the day who i really enjoyed watching 
a lot of honestly two two like the only comedy stand-up dvds i've ever bought back in the day when that was a thing um mm-hmm. was uh dimitri martin uh, uh and zach galifianakis back when he was doing stand-up i've got him the one where he's live at the purple onion uh, purple what onion yeah okay. great, yeah chaotic special I've watched that one so many times. Oh, I love it so much. I got chased down one time because if I wear a suit and I don't have a hat on, like people love <laughs> telling oh, me wow. how much I love like Zach Galifianakis. Like people I've never put it. that together. They can't they can't wait to tell me how much I look like that? <laughs> I got cha- a guy chased me down on a ferry one time. But hey, man, has anyone ever told you you look like Zach Galifianakis? I was like, yeah, <laughs> tackles all the time. you off the ferry. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, all the time. Thanks. But you gotta go. They're gonna come for you. He doesn't have a ticket. <laughs> That's Zach Galifianakis. He'll pay for it. <laughs> Get him. But yeah. But that's awesome. I love that special. That's a good one. Yeah, it's a great special. Yeah. I don't even know if he does stand up. He probably doesn't. He probably he doesn't need to. He's probably. I still I wouldn't be residual shocked. Checks. Oh yeah. I mean, but I wouldn't be shocked to hear like. I think he lives like on a farm in North Carolina. Somewhere. Yeah, he's still in North Carolina, yeah. Right. He went to NC but I, State. Yeah, and I so I wouldn't be shocked to hear like like you know tomorrow like uh, going on TikTok like Galifianakis drops in to do a set somewhere, you know. But I don't think he's doing like the tour and like trying to build an hour and that. Kind of I stuff. can see I him he's... like in ten years being like, I'm doing this for fun and going yeah. on like a stand-up tour yeah yeah that's, cool. that's what i mean yeah. he seems to be that kind of guy like just the random pro- my, one of my favorite things he's ever done is when he made that music video for um to that kanye west song <laughs> have y'all ever seen that <laughs> it is i've seen it it is pure I will gold. Send it to you. oh it's so good okay okay and yeah. like, like i don't know the context like why did he do that i don't know if he even had kanye's permission to use the song like he Probably just not. did it professionally like had a camera crew i like it's not like it's very t- 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 yeah. yeah it is it is uh it's hilarious but it's so random like why did you even do that i'm glad you did but yeah i don't thank- know what led to this <laughs> thank you thank you but that. i have questions yeah <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. it definitely yeah. wasn't like a funnier die type product like it was i don't think it was like in conjunction with with that studio like he just produced by anybody he just did it yeah right yeah that's funny. awesome man well yes, matt man. thank you so much man i've thoroughly enjoyed learning more about you and and how things progressed for you but also congratulations on all the the success online and everything where can everyone uh find you at if they want to thank you new to yeah it? you get the easiest thing to do is just go to alostrich.com and you'll find all the links to everything there beautiful and you know maybe click the wrong thing and i'll steal your identity we'll see what happens <laughs> there's a Excellent. lot of links there. i love so you got a trap door built in proceed with caution yeah just keep you on your toes <laughs> love it oh man thank you so much will you got anything coming up you want to plug real quick oh well i'm probably quitting comedy soon <laughs> so if you want to come to my retirement it'll be uh october 4th <laughs> it's gonna be a really fun time you hear uh, that exclusive 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 dude there's so many people that would be like oh thank god <laughs> Not even because of the Harry Potter jokes. Just be, my dad, my dad would fly in, <laughs> <laughs> have balloons off the plane. He would just put his card down and be like, Dr- "Drinks are on me. This is gonna be the best retirement party yeah. of all time." <laughs> well, I got a special out, so make sure you check out based on a Drew story. It's on this YouTube channel or wherever you stream your uh, album, music, spoken word, because that's technically what we are on this platforms. Spoken word. So uh, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you check out all of Matt's amazing videos and all the great things he has to come. And we will see you next time.